Welcome back to Rock Paper Shotgun. You're watching our weekly show where we recommend a game we love and think you should be playing, handily titled you should be playing. With Matthew on a hard-earned vacay this week, you're stuck with me, Noah, again, with another recommendation. And this week, I'm all about Duskers, which is Misfits Attic's tale of space survival played out on flickering CRT screens and with a head filled of strategic smarts. Speaking of strategy, my tactic to grow this channel is to ask you to subscribe before you've even watched the video. And that's how confident I am you're going to enjoy it, so please do subscribe so you don't miss these weekly recommendations. Anyway, back to space. Duskers is a tactical, roguelike, survival horror game that should make any science fiction fan drool. Considering how many well-deserved awards it won upon release, I guess it kinda did. It's made by the husband and wife duo behind a virus named Tom, which is an action puzzler that is, for all intents and purposes, about circuitry. As you'll see from Duskers, electronics and interfaces clearly play heavily on their minds. In Duskers, your primary objectives boil down to gathering intel and resources from derelict ships and to search for survivors. You do this via drones that you control from some remote, unnamed location. Now, I'm not a naturally tactical person. Give me a strategy game to play and I'm a bit of a select all and then attack the thing kind of player. I'm good at keeping myself alive in horrible situations. Years of sneaking around Chibito in Forbidden Siren or some other naughty survival horror game has given me that instinct, so I was curious to see whether the latter could help overcome the former. The game capture you're seeing on the screen right now is an indicator of how that experiment worked out. So, despite not being ready to rebrand as a Duskers pro gamer, why am I recommending it? Well, I don't have to be a master strategist to recognize when I'm in the presence of airtight systems. Also, the game works in such a way that your approach can be as complex as you make it. The moving parts are straightforward, well taught, and easily implemented and built upon, meaning even the most bumbling astronaut can build their tactical vocabulary as they go. And I mean that in a literal sense as you're typing in commands throughout the game. To fulfill your objective, you explore derelict ships and comb through them for scraps to upgrade your drones and ship, fuel to, as you might imagine, fuel said ship, and stray bits of information that gradually flesh out your overall situation. This involves infestations, distress signals, and other such sci-fi related wiggins. You may even find other, unfortunately named, abandoned drones that are out of commission, which you can either tow back or swap upgrades with. In space, no one can hear you shamefully pillage a robot's guts. You access these derelicts from a star map that gives you a cursory glance over the wreckages for a quick summary before boarding. How many crew members it held, the level of threat or infestation, estimated scrap, how much it will cost to travel there, and occasionally other tidbits. Once you do decide what to board based on fuel supply and resources, hello strategy, you see a schematic of the ship to be revealed by boots on the ground exploration. Or would it be wheels on the ground? This is where my strategic thinking cap begins to wobble on my head. As you make your way through each room, you power doors, avoid enemies, and generally work out the best way to keep your little drones intact. Visual information is fed back to you through the grainy, sometimes very, sight lines of your drone buddies. Zoom out of a specific drone's orbit and you see the skeleton of the ship you're trying to flesh out. These range from four to six room layouts to ye gods larger and do a brilliant job of making you feel like a tiny speck of humanity trying to survive in something vast and unknowable. As I touched upon before, controlling your drones is all done via a basic command-based interface. I love the chunky practicality of this system. Want to open a door? Type the door number and hit enter. Once you've powered up the generator, of course. You can move a certain drone or three by navigating them, or scan the immediate environment by interfacing with a terminal, or using the motion upgrade. Soon, you're gathering abilities for your drones, such as turrets, for killing things pretty unsoftly, or gathering, or towing abilities to harvest goods and drag larger treasures back to mother. I mean, mothership. I've personally decided that the motion ability is my best friend. This upgrade scans rooms within a certain range so you can see where enemies are. I like upgrading more than one drone with this function, so I can see enemy layouts most of the time, if not at all times. If only that also protected me from the odd roaming enemy. Without save points outside of exiting or returning to the main menu, things can go south very quickly, if we knew which way was south in space. But this constant tension is part of what makes Duskers so appealing. If you should lose all of your drones or fudge it up so bad that you have to initiate a reset, I'm speaking hypothetically here, of course, you'll have to restart from the beginning. Drones, available upgrades, ship loot, etc. are largely randomized, so you won't necessarily have the same layout as before, nor will you find the same information. It creates a real attachment to your drones, because if you lose them, that's it. 
This also means each playthrough offers an entirely new glimpse of the story, and, you know, beats highly unstrategic players like me into shape. You can actually dabble with your drones in layout and loadout menus, all of which has to be done with keyboard presses and without a mouse, which is Major League dedication to their dated version of the future. You select the buddies you want to board the derelict, can change and swap their upgrades with others, and change their names. I'm sure I'm not the only one who took full advantage of that feature. It really does capture that sense of tinkering with machines in space, and building an escape route with your own mechanical ingenuity. So really, Duskers is like a real science fiction expedition, complete with beeps and boops, rusty tech, a bit of blind panic, and just a hint or two of butt-kicking triumph. But mainly blind panic. But it all relies on approaching situations in the best way you can come up with. A lot of what makes this game so cool is how it builds its entire world through the user interface. As you can no doubt see, you aren't exploring a derelict ship firsthand, as in Dead Space or Alien Isolation, although Duskers shares that future of the 70s vibe with Ridley Scott's universe. Instead, you see it through the eyes of a secondary participant, and thirdary and fourthary if you want to get specific. Your drones are your eyes, so you're seeing the world through their video signal. It really excites me when games cast you in a detached role, one step removed from the action. In Duskers, you are, in essence, the main character, with no strict story to follow as such, but a job to do. You gain access to stray bits of information as you do that job, but whether or not that makes up a cohesive story depends entirely on your level of engagement. Are you the kind of person who just beeps through the customer shopping to get to the wage at the end of the shift? Or are you curious as to why they're only buying rubber gloves and ham? Duskers welcomes both mindsets. When I was a kid, I used to empty out this toy trunk and sit in it with my dad's shades on, a walkie-talkie in my pocket and an old joystick stuck to the front, to steer, and pretend I was flying a space shuttle. While playing Duskers, I was similarly tempted to A, buy, and B, wear a flight suit, with or without aviators, I can't confirm, in a darkened room with a cup of coffee and a no-nonsense attitude because apparently playing pretend is still my thing, only with better toys this time. And forget flying a shuttle, in Duskers you're that lone drone operator sitting alone on a sparsely populated company ship. In all seriousness, what I like about this sort of experience is that it really allows you to put as much or as little of yourself into the game as you want. On the one hand, it could be a purely strategic experience which you can master and enjoy that way, or, as with me, it could be an exercise not just in the mechanical but the imaginative as well. Or I suppose a combination of the above. Both require creativity to think your way through potential problems and obstacles, and that makes Duskers a darn good game. I know for a fact that I've only scratched the surface of this game. That said, mastering Duskers might be hard, but I'm enjoying it. I may be a ways off yet. What do you think, couple of hundred light years? Still, this is a game I highly recommend, doubly so for the strategically minded. And for the video minded, why not subscribe to the channel for other recommendations as well as team up playthroughs, gameplay previews, lists, and more videos than you can shake a drone at. Please feel free to recommend games to us as well in the comment section below. One's already been brought to my attention that I can't wait to get stuck into. Thank you so much for watching, and hopefully we'll see you again soon.